Hey guys, what's going on? It's Rob here with Hammered Halo Projects. Welcome back. Today we're going to be doing a small kitchen backsplash. This kitchen is 8x8. We're going to use a 3x6 subway tile. We're going to lay it in a subway pattern or brick lay pattern. Really easy install, so let's get into it. The first thing you want to do is disconnect the power to all the plugs and switches in the backsplash area. The plugs and switches will need to come out of their boxes in order to install the tile properly. The last thing you want is to get zapped by a hot line. Trust me, this is exhilarating, but not much fun. It's also a good idea to test all the circuits in the area to make sure they're all off. To do this, I just use a simple plug-in tester I picked up on Amazon a while back. I think I paid like, I don't know, eight or 10 bucks for it, so it's really cheap. If these testers are really simple to use, all you have to do is plug them into each receptacle. The only two lights that should come on are the two amber lights on the right side. Any other combination means there's a problem with the wiring of the plug. For example, an open ground, neutral, or a hot light will light up only one of the ambers. And if you get a red light, then it's either a hot and ground are reversed or a hot and neutral are reversed. Just refer to the legend on the device itself and it'll tell you what the problem is. And for peace of mind, you can even go around and test all the plugs in your entire house to make sure everything is wired properly. If you want to get one, I'll include a link in the description below along with links to all the tools I used in this video. Okay, that's enough talk about electrical let's get back to tiling i'll be using a plastic schluter edge profile schluter makes a bunch of different edge profiles they come in different colors sizes and materials much like tile does when picking the style you want to make sure that the tile you choose also fits the profile the tile should fit just inside the outer profile edge i always like to level and square up the exact locations of where the schluter edge will go in this kitchen it will only be on the two open ends of the cabinets i do this by using a level first off the lower side of the cabinets and then from the edge of the countertop up. With plastic trim, I find it easier to measure across and down, then add those two numbers together to get the length of Schluter needed for each side. Then you can just cut the inside of the plastic at the intersecting measurement points and bend it to create the 90 degree angle you need. Using an eight inch notch trowel, I can now apply the adhesive by creeping up to the lines I drew earlier. Think back in childhood when your teacher told you to color within the lines. I'm sure you can do better than me. I always sucked at that task. Now just push the Schluter edge into the adhesive and do the same everywhere you have Schluter edging. The three by six subway tile we're using doesn't weigh much at all. So I'm gonna just use a premixed tile adhesive. Premixed tile adhesive is really only good for areas with limited moisture such as a kitchen backsplash. However, if you're tiling floors or wet areas like tubs or showers or using large format or heavier tile, it's always best to use a thin set product over pre-mixed adhesives. When laying out your tile on a simple backsplash like this one, there's only a couple of important things to take into consideration. One, starting on the bottom row, you always want to start with a full tile on the outer edge and ending in the corner with a cut edge. The corners will get grouted and caulked in the end, which will make rough cuts or unsquare corners look straight. Another good thing to do is to do a quick measurement from the countertop to the underside of the cabinet, and then calculating that to the number of rows of tile will help you determine the height of the top row of tile before you begin. What you don't want is just a sliver of tile as your top row. One, it looks terrible, and it's also a pain in the you know what to cut. The rule of thumb I go by is to make sure I have a minimum of an inch or more left for the top row. And then finally, using spacers is a must in most cases. I'll be using 1 16th inch spacers simply because I think a smaller grout line gives more of a modern look. However, this is a personal preference. This tile is super easy to cut, so I've only brought two cutting tools for this project. One is my 14 inch Sigma cutter, and then I've also brought a grinder with a diamond blade, mainly for cutting around the plugs. Once again, I'll put links in the description below to all the tools that I'm using. When spreading the adhesive, try and spread it evenly across your work area. The adhesive does start to dry fairly quickly, so don't apply to a larger area than what you can actually tile, or you'll end up having to scrape off the dried adhesive and reapply it. You always want to set your tile into wet adhesive for full coverage and maximum bond. Now, I like to extend one row of tile lower than the cooktop on all the backsplashes I do. I don't even know if this is common practice for tile setters, but it is something I've become accustomed to doing every time. And to hold this row of tile in place, I typically use a couple drywall screws under each tile until it sets, and then prior to grouting, just remove them.
When cutting out an area of tile that is more than just a straight cut, such as around plugs, switches, or even cabinets that are stepped like these cabinets, you'll need to use either a wet saw or a grinder with a diamond blade to make those cuts. I'm using a grinder with a block of wood as a sacrificial cutting board. This does take some practice, but with a little practice and patience, you can start to get precision cuts with this method. I will say a wet saw is a better way to go. It's also a safer way to go. So if you have access to one, definitely use it. Okay, so that's the two walls done in the above the countertop. So now she wants us to do that area in the microwave area. So that's pretty easy. And then we're out of here for today and we'll come back another day and grow. So yeah, it turned out great. I'm not gonna take you guys along on the grouting side of this. This'll be another day, but if you wanna do subway tile, all I can say is this three by six tile looks really good, but it does take a lot longer because they're smaller pieces. If you're gonna think of doing subway, or I would tend to uh, go toward a four by eight maybe in size. It just goes quicker, still a really nice look. But anyhow, thanks for hanging out with us today, guys. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and I will see you guys on the next one. Peace.